Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be talking to you about eVPN VXLAN underlay networks. The first question we need to answer is, why do we need an underlay network? The primary reason for an underlay network is to exchange loopback IP address information between VTEPs in the data center. I have two different topologies here. The, other on the, the one on the left is the classic leaf spine data center design um, where your leaves are your VTEPs and in some cases your compute could also be a VTEP and then you have the spine layer that allows you to scale out your data center horizontally. In terms of the control plane you could use BGP, you could use an IGP, it all depends. In this case on the left I'm using a BGP topology specifically eBGP, I have a different AS number on the spines and different AS number on the leaves. Now, the topology we'll be using for this video is the one on the right, and it's also going to be the same topology that we would use to enable, you know, layer 2 VPN um, services with VXLAN, layer 3 VPN services. We'll also use the same topology for symmetric and asymmetric IRB um, examples. So it's a very simple topology consisting of four switches. Um, these four switches are so the first two switches VUS1 and VUS2 will be my VTEPs. You notice I eliminated the spine layer, and then I have two other VEUS instances that I'll be using for simulating hosts. So with a very you know low-end laptop with eight gigs of memory, you could build a very simple topology like this that allows you to learn about EVPN and VXLAN. Now, these two arrows you see here are the loopback IP address information. Remember, I said eVPN underlay networks. The primary reason they exist is to exchange this loopback IP address information between the VTEPs. Now, I'm going to be configuring the underlay network with OSPF, and there's also some other features that we need to enable as well to build or completely build your underlay network, such as you will need to have the correct MTU between the VTEPs in order to ensure that once the 54 bytes of overhead are added, you will still be able to send you know, packets without you know, fragmentation. Um, and also, you need to also have, if you're running this in a production network, you will need to also have you know, 9,214 MTU if you want to support jumbo frames. So now let's take a look at what the underlay network looks like. So if I run show IP interface brief, you will notice that I have two different loopback addresses. So let's run show run interface loopback 0 to 1. You see the first loopback address is for the EVPN control plane, right? The second one is for the data plane. So this is for building the VXLAN tunnel. So this would be, for example, the source IP address you see in your VXLAN encapsulated packets. So in your outer header, this will be the source IP address. And then the remote VTEPs loopback address will, all, will then be the destination address. Right? So you have two different um, you know, loopback addresses required. Now, if I run show run section OSPF, section OSPF, you will notice that I have the interface connected to VUS3, VUS2 um, in point-to-point -point OSPF mode. Um, you see that I advertise the networks that I need. Um, so I'm, I'm using this network to form adjacencies and I'm advertising the different loopbacks and addresses as well. Um, and then another important thing to be aware of is you need to have um, your, your routing protocol, the agents for your routing protocol, you need to run them in multi-agent mode. So that needs to be the model. So you generally have two different modes. You have RIPD or you have multi-agent um, routing protocol mode. So you need to have it running multi-agent. So I have a separate video where I talk about the difference between RIPD and multi-agent routing protocol. But you just need to have this command. So if you're not familiar with what multi-agent looks like, I'm just going to show you. So you need to have this service routing protocols model multi-agent command. Um, and then once you enable this command, you will need to reboot your switch um, for, for, for the command to take effect. So just something to be aware of. 
Now I have this exact same configuration or the mirror configuration of VEOS 2. So I'm not going to you know, show you the entire thing from scratch. So I'm just going to run show IP route on VEOS 2. You see, I learned the loopback addresses of VEOS 1. And then I'm going to run show IP route on VEOS 1. You could see that I'm learning the loopback IP addresses of VEOS 2. Now, the final thing I'll show you is the actual interface between VEOS 1 and VEOS 2. You see I'm running an MTU of 9214. Um, this is important if you're building this in a real production network um, and you want to be able to support jumbo frames. Even if you didn't want to support jumbo frames, um, you need to also have the ability to support... Um, even if you didn't want to support jumbo frames, you still need MTU of 1554 because the VXLAN will add 54 bytes of overhead. So setting the right MT is very important to save you some extra troubleshooting in future. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. I hope this video was useful for you. In subsequent videos, we're gonna build um, layer two VPN topology. We're also gonna be layer three VPN and so on and so forth. So um, if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll try to answer them. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video.